Greetings citizens of the world, we are anonymous. The summer of 2011, and the world is getting to grips with a new form of protest. The revolution has begun. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. A revolution conducted online by hackers, people who carry out attacks in cyberspace. It's not a game. This is a crime. It's purely using technology to commit that crime on a global scale. I don't feel like a criminal. I just feel like a kid that put, the creativity, put his creativity in the wrong place at the wrong time. This online revolution involved attacks on computer systems and on websites, rather than fighting for a cause in the real, physical world. Carried out by so-called hacktivists, leaderless, but grouped under the name of Anonymous. Then Lulsec appears. A jokey splinter group, more chaotic than anonymous. Lulsec was like a rock band. Lulsec members were like rock stars. They were entertainers. Like Anonymous, they said they wanted information on the internet to be free. But Lulsec also wanted to have a laugh. So was Lulsec just a bunch of cyber jokers or a threat that had to be taken seriously? In an exclusive interview, we speak to one of the group's key members before he was imprisoned. A rare glimpse into the secretive world of hacking. The LulzSec hacking group held the online world in thrall as they went on a hacking rampage. The name LulzSec, or Lulz Security, derives from lulz being internet slang for the laughs. They caused chaos, hacking media companies, security firms, police, the CIA and the FBI. There were many LulzSec associates but half a dozen or so central characters, each with their own role and online name. In the real world, the members of LulzSec never met. They lived continents apart. This small group of individuals, most of whom have now been arrested, lived out their lives online in constant communication. They adopted colorful characters as they crashed websites and published the data they hacked. The oldest of the group was Hector Monsegur, known online by the nickname Sabu. He was New York-based and the closest the group had to a leader. Mustafa al-Bassam was the youngest, just 16, based in the UK and known online as Tiflo. Ryan Aykroyd, also from the UK, adopted the online persona of a teenage girl called Kayla. AV Unit, the identity of whom remains a mystery to this day, and finally, the group's head of comms and unlikely PR man, Jake Davis, who online became the witty and cocksure topiary. This is the first time he's agreed to a television interview. Aspects of myself went into it, but it was a exaggerated version of the things I couldn't really be. It was quite a, I think Topo is a lot, he's uh, a lot more confident than I am certainly, but, um, I am speaking as myself, truthfully to you, um, in a, in a real-life environment rather than a behind an alias on, on the internet. At the time, Jake was 17 and living on the remote Shetland Islands off the north coast of Scotland. His parents split up when he was very young, and then, when Jake was just 13, his stepfather died in a car crash. After being bullied at school, he became a near recluse. His mother and brother moved to England and Jake was alone. He rejected the real world for internet chat rooms. I, I literally just made friends online and the computer screen was like a God's eye view of the world to me. So just utter, utter isolation um, day and night 
so the of course sleeping patterns all over the place and when you when you and your friend base is is uh, existent only through the internet, um, time zones become kind of irrelevant. Because there was nothing, there was no stimuli during the day outside, there were no uh, social groups I would hang out with, I would sleep during the day uh, and feel no responsibility. So it was a very limited world. It's a world that you can see and hear, but, but that's it. You can't, you can't touch the internet, you can't feel it, you can't kind of smell it or taste it or sense it. So it's, it's um, a world kind of devoid of, of empathy. It, became, it's a, it's, it was my world, it was a very cynical world, and I became a very cynical person within that world. Palmy Olsen is a journalist who wrote about many of Lol's sex attacks when they were at their most active. She's since spoken to the key players about the time they spent planning and discussing hacks online in chat rooms, like-minded communities where conversations are fast-moving, often intense and introspective can be very, very uh, lively one minute, but also very negative the next. There can be a lot of backbiting and bitchiness and paranoia as well. And it's just very, very up and down. Like online, it's if you imagine the kind of office politics that you experience in a normal office, multiply that by three, and that's what you get in Anonymous. And so these guys get very, very stressed and very emotional, even though they're just sitting there. Um, the thing they're being connected to is an incredibly dramatic world. It's a, frene a frenetic amount of activity and stuff going on in their heads. The attacks took two forms. The first evaded an organization's security to infiltrate, then extract data, sometimes confidential, and publish that for the world to see. This is traditional hacking. The second, known as a DDoS attack, or Distributed Denial of Service, marshaled thousands of computers to take aim at a website and flood it with requests for information until it crashed. The group discussed these attacks in hidden parts of the internet that most of us aren't even aware of. Well, here in London, there might be some areas which you know have more crime or are somehow shady. They typically don't go there unless you have a reason. The same thing applies to the internet. There are shady areas of the internet, areas you have no idea even exist. Areas completely outside of the normal web where you surf with your browsers. Services and systems where you need special clients to even see the discussions going on in them. Which means normal people have no idea uh, this dark side of the internet exists, but it certainly does. And because internet is just a reflection of the real world, it probably always will. Lulsex targets were an eclectic mix, only loosely political, often prankish in nature. Members of the group have been indicted in the US for allegedly stealing and publishing a database containing details of 70,000 potential contestants for The X Factor. In the UK, some have pleaded guilty to hacking the website of The Sun newspaper and replacing its front page with a false story that Rupert Murdoch had been found dead in his topiary garden. Their name is also linked to attacks on Sony, when the games company was under fire from hackers across the internet, angry about what they saw as the company's blasé approach to keeping people's data secure. spoke to the world, directed by Jake Davis, defined the personality of Lulsec, and there was an element of spin too. There were a lot of other splinter groups like Lulsec that, have, that were around at the time and that have come out since then that didn't get anywhere near the kind of notoriety that they did. It's not just because Lulsec was great at communicating and was witty and funny on Twitter and put out prolific press releases um, and, you know, chatted to journalists and whatever else. Um, it was also because they did have one or two very, very skilled hackers within the group. So it was a confluence of circumstances um, and this meeting of minds and a group, a small group of people who had actually just met each other a few months prior and kind of were getting closer and closer until they made this, what they thought was an elite team to inspire Anonymous. But definitely the issue of, of communicating and PR was so important in creating this mirage almost of a dangerous organization, a threatening group. Lulsec had grabbed the attention of the world's media with the taunting, light-hearted tone of the publicity around their attacks. Taking a shot at big companies was one thing, but in amongst their targets were several law enforcement agencies. 
On their Twitter feed, Lalsec boasted about bringing down a website linked to the FBI. They crashed the CIA's home site and sought to embarrass those whose job it is to investigate cybercrime, the UK's serious organised crime agency, Soccer, by forcing their website offline. Time to strike back, infiltrate. Attacking the police was a step too far, according to Mikko Hypenen, who spent the last 20 years unpicking computer viruses and tracking down hackers. It's quite clear that the law enforcement in the United States had, and here in Europe took LALSIC personally. For a reason, because LALSIC was very brazenly going after law enforcement targets. They were attacking law enforcement sites in the United States, they were recording their conf calls between Europe and USA. Hello? Yeah, hello. Sure, yeah? Hey, it's Bruce. Ah, uh, Bruce, how you doing? This is what he's talking about, a hacked conference call between Scotland Yard and the FBI, recorded and published in the name of Anonymous. So we've, we've set back the further arrests of Kayla and Tiflo. The fact uh, that the world could tune in and listen to the cybercrime teams as they discussed pursuit of Lulsec was acutely embarrassing for law enforcement. I just saw the information about the big ACPO cyber conference in Sheffield. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're going to be able to come? I think so, yeah. I've never been to Sheffield. You've missed nothing. It's a really? Oh, yeah, I'm afraid so. It's not exactly a jewel in England's crown. <laughs> Police in that call did meet up in Sheffield, where local academics aim to encourage young enthusiasts to take an interest in computer coding by developing their own computer games. Uh, everything else that we'd want. So what we need to do is we need to go into here and we need to pull an object out and put it into our seat. So. Here at Sheffield Hallam University's Games Britannia event, school children are being taught how to use standard game software to create their own worlds. One of the academics at this same university briefed the police on cyber security and was then asked to get involved in the Lulsec case. Yeah, this is a more visual interpretation of the data which allows us to know where the attacks are coming from. This is basically the, the hackers have um, managed to breach the system um, using a buffer overflow attack. They're just showing off. Dr David Day was unpicking evidence on the computer hard drive of T-Flow, one of the most technically competent of the LulzSec hackers. How good a hacker was he? I'd say he was very good. Um, he, he was using the, uh, the, the, tool, the appropriate tools for performing uh, this kind of activity. He was well versed in their use um, and he knew how to, to, to write code and, and write malicious scripts to a level you know, which far exceeds what I would have imagined somebody of his age to be able to do. Were you surprised when you did eventually find out just how young he was? I was very surprised, yes. Um, I, I wouldn't have imagined somebody that age would have had the time to accumulate that level of knowledge and expertise. Did you yourself find you were becoming immersed in this world? Totally absorbed, yeah, yeah. For probably about two weeks, um, I, I didn't do an awful lot else. I, had a, a, I spent a lot of my time hauled up. I was working long hours um, on occasions where I found something that I found exciting. I got animated and maybe stayed up you know, to the early hours of the morning or sometimes in the night I'd wake up with an idea and, and have no option other than to get up and, 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 and test my hypothesis. But, I mean, I totally understand um, the, you know, how, how, how hacking um, can be thrilling uh, and I can, I can identify with, um, with the thrill of, of, uh, of the challenge of it and, and the, the sort of emotional reward that you get when you're successful. But the challenge is to convince young people that being on the right side of the internet can be just as much fun as the dark side and that the consequences of hacking for what might appear to be a laugh are not worth it. Jake pleaded guilty to a charge related to the UK's Serious Organised Crime Agency, or Soccer, which he says is based on a two-line exchange in a chat room. That, that one page was the first thing that was presented to me 
in in terms of police trying to give evidence. Um, that that was it. That was my involvement. This this one uh, conspiracy to commit computer misuse against soccer. Um, in in two lines of of text on a computer screen that I genuinely I typed thousands tens of thousands of lines of computer text a day and these two little lines that I probably wrote seven seconds apart these stick with you and these are these are worth um, a separate charge that's punishable by up to ten years in prison. I suppose it doesn't matter though whether mm. it's whether it's two lines or ten lines it's what it says. Oh, it oh, I can, well, I completely agree. I, I could have said don't go after soccer, but I said, go after soccer, so. Do you regret getting involved with the soccer situation? I regret 95% of the things I've ever typed on the internet, including, especially including those two or, or, two or three lines of just, sure, let's go after these people, why not? Why not kind of thing, it can't hurt. And obviously it did hurt both um, the, the uh, soccer and myself and others. We still come across individuals who don't appreciate that committing an attack on the internet is exactly the same as committing a physical type of attack. It has real world impact at the end of the day, whether that's financial loss, reputational harm or emotional harm. Um, it's not a game. This is a crime, it's purely using technology to commit that crime, which, as we've seen, actually makes the attacks easier to commit on a larger scale and on a global scale. You get to explain that in the Day of Judgment and your destruction is imminent. I know, I, am I going to hell? At the time of the attack on the UK's Serious Organised Crime Agency, or SOCA, the identities of the Lulsec crew were still unknown. But it's possible that Jake had already let down his defences. His voice was clearly recognisable in a live hack performed on a US radio show against the Westboro Baptist Church, an outspoken fundamentalist Christian group with anti-gay views. And I think if you check downloads.westborobaptistchurch right now, you'll see a nice message from Anonymous. This was early 2011, just as Lulsec was getting started. That appears to be from Anonymous on downloads.westborobaptistchurch.com. At that point, having no real identity or having no being being quite carefree you just think I'll do it why not what's the worst thing that could happen um, unfortunately the worst thing that could happen is it gets half a million views in about 12 hours and is on the front page of YouTube like I felt extremely vulnerable at that point because it felt like that the barrier had broken between the internet and real life I I have like a cold a cold sweat after that just what did I just do kind of thing Tonight, inside the almost impenetrable world of the hackers who claim... On the 24th of June, 2011, on the BBC's Newsnight programme, we spoke to Topiary in an online chat room. He came across as his usual confident online self. In reality, he told us, he was in turmoil, and now describes that day as a turning point. That's because earlier on that Friday, in the US, LulSec members had attacked the Arizona State Police in protest against tough new laws on immigration. They released private intelligence material, names, addresses and phone numbers of officers and the content of emails. The Arizona Police hack was the, the, the big turning point for myself and various others that just thought this hack has gone way too far. This isn't in any, this, there's no point to this thing, it's just harming police officers. This, this doesn't A, entertain anyone, B, uh, help a anyone anywhere. I decide, well, I'm, I'm not this person that, that the media are kind of dictating the narrative of. I'm just literally just some kid in a bedroom. I decided just to, just to leave it, just, just to cut everything off, shut down my laptop lid for once, and um, just live out a, a simple, normal teenage life who, and get into college, so I, I, I found it extremely hard to, to get this across to other, to other hackers. The group was falling apart, and unbeknownst to the world, America's Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, had a new weapon. Just prior to the Arizona hack, one of the LulSec founders and the closest the group had to a leader, Hector Monsegur, known online as Sabu, had been arrested. At the time, he was living in New York and responsible for his two young nieces. Reports suggest he was fearful of what might happen to them if he was imprisoned. For some 10 months, he turned informer for the FBI. I had my suspicions after he had um, disappeared from the internet for, I think, around 24 hours and had come back to the internet and was uh, beginning to act a little bit 
what some would describe as different. Obviously, if if, if your house has just been raided by the FBI, you're gonna even in in that um, emotionless state of chat room text, you're gonna not be able to uphold the same by by force of the FBI the same personality. So, I uh, there, there were a few that just suspected immediately within the first ten minutes that. This, why are we speaking to this person? Why are we allowing him to goad us into hacks? It, there must be something going on here. But it was that kamikaze thought. Well, who cares if he is? The FBI are in America, and I thought, well, they, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that. That's the kind of stuff that happens in Hollywood films. And we know who he was, and we know where he lives, and we know Jake was arrested in the UK on July the 27th, 2011. His last tweet as topiary read, you cannot arrest an idea. You're obviously a bright person. You, you told, told us you were isolated, but you must have been able to think through that there would be consequences. Mm. Well, uh, at, at, the, at the time, to put in context, I was 17, 18 years old, quite mentally unstable at the time in a very bad place. And at, at times I could see through the kind of haze of, of internet um, they kind of suppressed all, everything else into, yes, seeing there would be consequence, but it was more a case of who cares if there's consequence, I want to live in the moment and just enjoy this glimmer of attention. Experts have little doubt that LulzSec will be remembered. They achieved a rare thing, notoriety online and in the real world, in the brief time they existed, what they called their 50 days of lulls. But the outcome has not been a happy one for any of the LulzSec crew. Sabu Hector Monsegur is awaiting trial in the US, charged with crimes that include not just hacking, but bank fraud. In theory, he could face 124 years behind bars. Earlier this year, Tiflo, Mustafa al-Bassam, was given a 20-month suspended sentence in the United Kingdom, so will serve no time, but will have to carry out 300 hours of unpaid work. Also in the UK, Kayla, Ryan Aykroyd, was jailed for 30 months and is expected to serve half of that. AV unit remains unidentified. Anyone committing a crime, whether it's a physical crime or a crime on the internet, potentially a global, um, using global associates or infrastructure abo abroad, using proxies to hide their identity, um, that will be investigated. They will be arrested and they will be prosecuted. And that's the message that needs to go out there. We will work with our global partners and industry to bring these individuals to justice. When you look at groups like Anonymous or LulzSec, this is not our main enemy. Yes, they broke the law. Yes, they should be punished. But I'm much more worried about organized criminal gangs from Russia, from Ukraine, from Romania, from China, from Brazil. Gangs which are actually stealing money. Gangs which are actually making millions with their attacks. I've spoken to many hackers who've been caught. Many of them feel they could have been really useful in securing systems, but for a reason or another they went to the wrong path or they didn't have the opportunities or they made some mistakes. But the same thing keeps, they keep telling me the same thing over and over again. If they could change what happens, they would rather be on the other side. They would rather be on our side. So should we be trying harder to steer young people away from the seemingly glamorous world of hacking and harnessing their skills? The irony is we need the people who, who have the skill sets and the kind of personalities that enjoy hacking to, 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 to come over and join us in the forensic side, in the intrusion detection side. We need people with their kind of skills and abilities and, and with their desire for, for puzzle solving um, to, 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 to be on, on the other side of the fence. Do you have a message for people who might look at what you've done and in some way copycat that situation? I hope, I hope I've not resulted in copycats. Um, if, you, if you have that passion to do something, to outlet your creativity, and you have nothing else to do, try to find something beyond the, the front door rather than get sucked into the computer world. So if you get sucked into the computer world, you get dependent on it. If you're dependent on it, it's very hard to say no to some things that you will later come to regret. Jake Davis was given a 24-month sentence. 
He'd already been under police restrictions, which counted against this time, so he's reaching the end of some 38 days imprisonment. Some LULSEC members in the UK, including Jake Davis, have been indicted in the US, though so far there's been no request for extradition. LULSEC may have thought of themselves as latter-day pirates whose online antics highlighted the inadequacies of internet security professionals. Prosecutors saw LULSEC differently, as a cowardly and vindictive group at the cutting edge of cybercrime, whose comeuppance, they say, should warn other cybercriminals that they are not invincible. 